the ISA-1 Digital, the classic Focusrite Mic Pre and simultaneous DI. Now with class-leading stereo ADC as standard. We're here on the link stand to look at the new Hilo, which is an A to D D to A converter, and Paul's here to talk us through it all. So, uh, OA to you. Hi, I'm Paul Erlinson. I'm the Director of Product Support for Link Studio Technology. And uh, this is the first time at AAS where we're showing the Hilo. It's our newest converter product, which we'll be shipping by the end of the year. And it is a little bit different. Um, there were a, a number of requests for a two-channel ADDA, like our popular Aurora converters, but in a two-channel format. So we thought, well, that's a good idea, but uh, why don't we even make it a little bit more interesting? So there was a number of things that we did with the Hilo that uh, we find innovative, and hopefully the uh, consumers out there will as well. Um, first off, in terms of sound quality, the Hilo is far and away the best sounding product that we've uh, ever manufactured. Um, we've done some unique things with the analog front end uh, as a converter. Uh, one of the things that's a little different is we use two converters per single channel of audio on both the A to D and the D to A side. So that does a lot to increase the dynamic range, uh, does great things for the noise and distortion specs as well. So you're, so you're running them differentially, presumably. That's right, yeah. that's right, correct. So yeah, there's no uh, appreciable difference in terms of latency, but a uh, significant improvement in clarity and imaging and everything. Sure, so, good. Uh, so it really sounds great. Uh, the other thing, you know, people have requested a headphone jack, and that makes good sense, that especially in a product, a two-channel product like this, but we thought we'd go one further, and uh, the headphone jack we've created uh, from our measurements is about the lowest distortion headphone amp on the market right now. It is really, really a very good sounding headphone, capable right. of driving headphones of a number of uh, variety of levels and impedances. Um, the other thing we did that was innovative is rather than have a cluttery front panel, because there are so many channels of I.O., and I'll get to that in a minute, uh, we opted for a touchscreen, which not only is much more uh, versatile in terms of routing and control, but there's a lot of other interesting things we can do. As you can see now, we're doing a very realistic uh, representation of analog metering. Mm -hmm. You can easily change that to a different meter type just from the front. So for instance, we can do the Doro style meters as well, on there as well. This is only the beginning. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more we can do with that in the future with phase scopes and a lot of uh, acoustic analysis tools and so forth. That's one of the, uh, the uses of Hilo that makes it unique as a product. But let me step back a little bit and just talk about the I.O. It's much more than just ADDA, two channels, both directions. We do have you know, the uh, analog inputs and, and master analog outputs, but in addition, we put a monitor out. Um, originally, we designed it with the monitor out as a parallel output, uh, but we got a lot of feedback from mastering engineers that said, well, look, we can really use this thing if we can send that through our analog chain sure. and, master the, and monitor the results coming out the back. Yeah. So the monitor out is completely independent. It has its own DACs. You can route anything to it independently of the master outs. And also the headphone outs as well are completely independent. They have their own DACs and can have their own mix independent from the other two. Okay. We went with a lot of digital formats. We want to make sure you can hook it up to just about anything on the market. Mm -hmm. So it has a SPDIF coax. It has optical I.O., which is software selectable between ADAT light pipe and, uh, and optical SPDIF, and AES view. Okay. And the unique thing is that they're all available independently. Mm -hmm. You can also send different combinations of signals to each of the digital outputs independently of the analog outputs as well. Okay. So you can see here that uh, it also has a lot of potential to be a format converter, signal router, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of kind of problem solving things it yeah. does as well as straight ADDA conversion. One unique thing we did this time as well is we put in a nine volt uh, connection. So mm -hmm. you can get a battery pack for the Hilo and use it out in the field. So that's another uh, market that we okay. think has that's some nice. interest for this as well. So, and of course, word clock. Now the connection to the computer is via high-speed USB 2.0 yep. uh, connection, and that works with uh, OS X or Windows. Um, it's very low latency. Uh, it actually handles a lot of channels. If you think about it, we have the light pipe channels, all of the digital, all of the analog. Mm -hmm. So it's up to 16 channels of I.O. being delivered through USB. Right. As in terms of monitoring, we have 16 coming back from USB blended with all of those, and you can monitor all those through a single output, Excellent. any of the outputs in the unit. So It looks like that interface is a modular one, so is the idea to be able to change that as interface standards evolve? That's right. 
Uh, this is a, an L-slot adapter, which we originally developed that format for the Aurora converters. Yes. So this is the same USB interface that the Aurora has available to it. Okay. Uh, but that being the case, like you've noted, uh, some of the other L-slot interfaces will be available to use with the Hilo as well. Notably, the um, Pro Tools HD uh, interface right. and then Maddie. Yes. So there's a lot of other forms of connectivity okay. to integrate in the system. Good. That won't be available in the first run, but that's something we're, we're integrating yeah. in a future release. Okay. Like our other products, it's FPGA driven, mm -hmm. so features can be added and enhanced through firmware updates uh, in the field. Uh, it's very easy to do. It's a sim uh, simple program you run that programs via USB. So right. as we come up with new things, you can easily uh, implement Fantastic. them on the front. So, um, so I'll show you a little bit about the touch screen. In addition to the touch screen, uh, the uh, the, the knob on board is very responsive. Um, it's it's multi-purpose in that it'll do analog domain level control for the main outputs right. rather than digital. Yes. Uh, it also do level control for all of the other outputs. Mm -hmm. It's also an increment decrement dial for any of the parameter Settings. selection as well. Okay. So it's really the idea was that as you're tapping through, you have one place to adjust parameters rather than multiple places to sure. do that. So, so here's the uh, the metering page. This is what it defaults to when it's idle for some period of time. This mm -hmm. is like your screensaver. It goes back to metering as a default. You can control yep. how long it takes before it goes back, but okay. uh, that's where it, it goes back to. If you want to change the types of meters, you just click and choose the ones you want. You can choose what those meters are showing you directly below it. So that can be any of the digital outputs, the line outputs, the headphone out, the monitor out, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Just with a click of a button. We also have a meter because there is so much I.O. on board, we have a meter that shows you everything. Okay. Yep. So it's just sort of like, where do I have signal showing up in the yes. system? So um, that's not so much giving you the meter level, just showing where you have activity going there. So, so in addition to that, uh, all the controls you would expect, things like the backlight, you know, a lot of ways you can kind of customize the yeah, behavior so. of the unit. You can have it show the sync source on all the pages and the sample rate on all the pages if you choose to, but you know, you're not forced to do that. Okay. It's, a, it's a parameter. Um, there's a navigation here. So we have the home settings. We have utility. We have some of the I.O. options, the display, and then back to meters. Mm. There's obviously a lot of scope here to expand and enhance it later on in terms That's of its right. functionality and, and uh, facilities you're offering. That's right. That's right, absolutely. As we get more feedback from the field, as far as enhancements we can do, it's really quite simple to implement yeah. with the touch screen um, without fundamentally changing it. On the Aurora, the way we had to accommodate things like that was to do combinations of function keys. Right. Because we also wanted that to have an uncluttered front panel. Sure. Um, so, but that's not self-explanatory. You have to look that up. Yes. But here we can have, if there's a function people keep asking for, we can implement it and have a button for it very, absolutely. very easily. So it's a really evolving yeah. uh, product in that regard. I think this is a very exciting product. Um, is it shipping now, or is it about to start shipping? Uh, the anticipated ship date is in mid-December. Okay. So we may have a short run that goes out before then, of course, going out to beta testers and so forth, yeah. but uh, the, the first run of the product is uh, anticipated for December. Okay, and so. what are we looking at in terms of its price? Uh, the price on the uh, Hilo is twenty four ninety five, and that's with USB card installed and everything uh, as is. So Excellent. we find it to be very competitive yes. for a, a high-end ADDA with all that we've added. It's sort of like, that's what you'd expect to pay for an ADDA of this quality. Yes. All the other stuff is uh, is A bonus, absolutely. Yes. No, very exciting Great. product. Thank you, yeah, Paul. Yeah, we think so. Thanks, Thanks very much.